Uh, what I would like, the Europeans have a notion, a concept of what they call a flagship site, which is an archaeological site which, for whatever reason, is of such high quality that it illuminates whole other sites. It's a central sort of other sites of lesser quality or where the work hasn't been as good. And the thing that makes a flagship site is the quality of the site itself. And then the other aspect of it is the methodology used to excavate. So, for example, you can have an extraordinary site that's badly dug. Or you can have exquisite methodology in a site that has no information. My impressions of this is that this is an exceptional, uh, it's an exceptional site, and it's an exceptional excavation. It's a real. It's going to be the flagship site for this time period, probably for the next generation. Would be my bet. Uh, down in this very deep pit, there is uh, quite extraordinary uh, agri set of of pits. This pit is extremely large, very deep. Uh, the contents of the pit are, are of, of great interest, but it's just this bunch of pits. Uh, very dense set of pits. By dense, I mean a lot of them in a small area. Um, and that, I can't think of any good comparators for that. And then this, whatever this is coming out over here, uh, one hypothesis is it might be a house or it's another set of pits. But there's a whole series of behaviorally very interesting things happening down here. And then over in the other unit, um, they're taking off these very well-controlled slices through time. And one of the things I find very interesting over there is that in that brown zone that they have, where you start off with cascade, laurel leaf type points, and then you have a transition between those and the lower uh, western stemmed wind dust, that transition has never been really clearly uh, found, in other words, good examples of that transition are exceedingly rare. So any case where you have uh, one kind of technological or aspect of a technological tradition replacing another and you actually get that transition is really nifty. Uh, and I think that's over there. Uh, it'll be interesting to see when they get down into the stuff underneath whether it's this and they open it up and they've got pits galore when they put in the test pit uh, way back when they hit a pit. And so the the reasonable inference would be that once they get down into that, it's going to look like this. Uh, and if it looks like this, that'll be quite extraordinary. Because other sites of this age uh, are either on the surface of gravel bars, they're lagged onto the top of the gravel bar where the people camp on a sandbar, and then the river rises and takes away the sand, it takes away the bone, and it drops the stone down on top of the cobbles. And there are three of those. I dug one a long time ago. Or rock shelters like Marmus. Uh, Marmus Rock Shelter on the Palouse River was the uh, flagship site for this time period, dug in the late 60s uh, under emergency conditions. Uh, for the time, it was pace setting excavation. Um, and then Windows Cave, so the series of cave sites, but the sort of large open site like this for this time period is very, very, a couple of them, but very, very rare. There aren't that many of them. Uh, but again, the investment here in terms of the time to peel it apart, peel it, peeling the stuff off like an onion, is very unusual, and it's going a long way to fully realizing what, what's here. But anyway, that's what's going on over there is uh, that, to me personally, is interesting as that transition between the earlier cascade stuff and then underneath that, the, the stem points, getting, capturing that. 500-year time span or whatever it is when you get one displacing the other is, is, is pretty exciting.